Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm the Strategy Professor, and today we're going to be looking at the proposed changes for patch 10.5. So this will be coming out next week. Be sure to always check out my in-depth patch notes. I always um, talk about that on the Tuesday before it releases, so about a week from now I'll have the in-depth patch notes. But a lot of people keep asking me, you know, every stream, what do I think about these changes on the PBE? What do I think about these proposed changes? Um, so I'm just going to start doing a, um, just a weekly update on that. Either a week when a patch comes out, I do the official patch notes, or if there is no patch like this week, then I'll just do whatever's on the PD and just kind of keep you up to date so you can start thinking ahead, um, about what might happen. So as always, if you enjoy the content, be sure to like and subscribe, check out the rest of the content on the channel as well, and stop by the stream sometime. Super friendly, very chill. I try to answer all the questions that I can in the chat, and I try to explain as much as I can about, um, about what's going on. While I'm playing. Okay. Let's go ahead and get in here. So. I don't know. It might be in there. On the table. Uh, but they are buffing the Hydras. So. Hi, Rory. She's like a zoo in here. <clears throat> um, it's like as soon as I start recording this, everybody comes in and starts yelling all this stuff. Honey, coffee table in there. It's probably around there. I think the remote's sitting on top of the couch. I don't know where it is. Might be upstairs. Might be on the dining room table. Um, okay, so as far as uh, Hydras go, so the champions that I think of immediately, they are buffing these Hydras up. Um... random thing from yesterday we were looking at on stream so it's pretty much it does more damage per hit here on the titanic hydra and then ravenous hydra is uh 18 percent extra life steal and the radius the active radius is higher now they were doing something with tiamat to nerf the tiamat it looks like they've taken that off so it's just a straight buff to hydra now or so it appears um rather than uh, a nerf to Tiamat and a buff to Hydra. So it just looks like a straight buff. So big champions that are already pretty good that use those items. Uh, Kled immediately comes to mind. He's very strong. He uses Titanic. It's awesome as an attack reset with his... Um, I forgot what it is, but like his four strike hit. Uh, gives him a ton of burst damage. So that'll be nice on him. Um, I know that Fiora tends to use the Ravenous Hydra... She's kind of out of the meta. She's, like, all right right now. She's a good split pusher, but it's, you know, she might be a good matchup into things like, um, into things like, uh, Orn, stuff like that. I think Jax uses Titanic in some builds. I know he likes Tiamat for the way player. What does? Yeah. Um... So, it'd probably be a buff to Jax. I don't know if he always goes for that build, but I know he, in the past, has liked that. So, that would be an option. They are buffing Blade and King. That would be another option on him. So, plenty to think about there. I'm trying to think of who else. Um, I know y'all will think of a lot in the comments section, but those were the two that immediately jumped out to me. There are plenty of champs that get Tiamat and just sit on it for a long time, or there are several... Um, especially like some AD junglers. I think Nocturne might get a Tiamat and um, like Shaco gets a Tiamat. War Warwick gets a Tiamat. But I don't think they complete them most of the time. I think uh, Talon will get a Tiamat sometimes. But of the people who actually want to complete it and use it, um, I think he's one of the big ones. Shin might also like um, the Titanic upgraded. I mean, if it's really good, you might see it on more champions. Like, maybe even someone like Set would like that. Um, just kind of depends. But I think the biggest one that comes to my mind right now that pops out is Kled. Just because he always gets it, and he's all, he's already a pretty strong champion like, 53%. So, I think he's the biggest one that I can think of right now. But there will probably be others that might switch over and try it out that don't use it as often. So, Kled, Jax, maybe, would be the big beneficiaries. Now, Blade of the Ruin King, melee attacks, it does 12% of the target's current hits. This is a massive buff for Master Yi. Because he's one of the only melee champions that consistently gets that every single time because he gets Gensu also. <clears throat> and then when you combine um, 
Blood Razor, which is already really cost efficient with Gensu's, with Blade of the Rune King. That's really when he starts going off um, and is extremely difficult to stop. So that's a lot of extra damage because it's going from 8 to 12, but you got to remember that Gensu's is going to trigger it twice every third attack. And I think Master Yi gets a um, gets his double strike every so often. I don't remember. It's like six attacks or so, but then the Gensu double strikes also stack that up. And then he just has a lot of attack speed in general. So there's a lot of multipliers that go on with Blade of the Ruined King, specifically with Master Yi. So any sort of attention that it gets in terms of uh, buffs is huge. So that's going to make him even more dangerous. He's going to be a massive threat. Now, another one um, that I mentioned before could be Jax. I don't know if Jax is going to get that or not in the past. He has considered that, but... Um, he might still go Trinity Sterics. It might just depend on the matchup. So maybe against tanks, he could go for that. Irelia is another one who might end up getting Titanic. I think, I think she gets Tiamat a lot of times for clear. Um, she's another one who has the option to go Blade. I don't know if she would get it. But those are two that could make sense. And then, you know, I heard like some of the, um, <clears throat> some of the big corporate channels, you know, talking about Zed potentially being really good with Blather and King. And it's like, maybe, I mean, the slow is good, but you're not going to sit there and auto-attack a lot. Like, part of what made Zed strong in the past with Blade of the Rune King was it used to do a lot more damage scaling, I think, on its active. And that's not changing. It's just how much you do per auto. So, um, the fact that you're, you know, two or three autos you're going to be getting on your all-ins. I mean, it does stack with your ultimate um, to do even more damage, but I'm still not, I, I'm still not fully sold that, Zed's going to want to um, invest in something like that. Maybe. Maybe he gets that over some other options, but I don't think it's going to like give him you know, like a plus 5% or something win rate. So it'll probably be okay. Um, now, obviously, it's not going to apply to ranged users, so it doesn't apply to Vayne, doesn't apply to Varus, Kog'Maw, stuff like that. It's just for melee. So, you know, like I said, Master Yi's the big winner. There might be a couple others that I'm not really thinking about too much right now, but... Um, you know, maybe Jax, maybe Irelia. I don't think there's going to be a ton of people going to be doing it. Like, I don't think Aatrox would want that. So, <clears throat> anyways. Not a huge deal other than buffing Master UI. Uh, and then Turret Place. Now, this is a weird one that I hadn't heard about until I saw this post. And this is a post by Riot Scruffy or whatever his name is. It's been previewing... Uh, a lot of the changes that are coming up. So some of these show up on the PBE, some of them don't. Now, this is a really weird change. So turret plates are taking them back to 160, which in general I think is good. That gives more power specifically to the bot lane. If you get ahead, you get some plates. And that was part of what helped snowball in end games a little bit faster in the preseason. But they are like massively nerfing how much range champions do to turrets. So. All range champs do 20% less damage to turrets, and the resistances per bulwark stack go from 35 to 45, and per nearby enemy champion. Both of them. So that is just going to make these things impossible to crack. So that means every plate that you take down, I believe, is a bulwark stack. Now, I don't know if that's the, if that stack is the thing that falls off after 30 seconds or not. But, and each nearby enemy champion is going to be an extra 10 as well. So the 10 doesn't sound like a lot, but you got to remember going from 10 to 35 is like 30% more. So that's basically going to give them like 30% more effective HP um, with that stacking. In addition to taking 20% less damage. Now I don't know if that's 20% from the base and then applies resistances or if that's 20% after resistances. If that's 20% pre-mitigation... Uh, that's going to be insane. Because if you think about, like, if you're doing 100 damage to the tower or whatever, and you get that reduced by 20 right off the bat, takes it down to 80, and then it's getting, like, 100 armor, then you're really doing 40 damage to it. So, you know, in a turret, I don't even know, I think it has, like, 5,000 health or something. So it's just going to take forever to crack these towers. I just don't think people are going to get first gold that often before... Um, before the expiration in the bot lane. So maybe this makes people want to go top a lot more just because they can potentially get more of those plates. If it's a melee top lane or in a melee jungler, 
you know, they're going to be able to take those plates a lot faster. This does make Rift Herald a lot more valuable as well because Rift Herald does true damage um, and ignores the Bulwark stacks. It's melee, so it ignores that. And you're getting more dam you're getting more gold from plates. So if you get like three plates off a of Rift Herald, now you're going to be getting 120 extra gold, which is pretty big. So this is going to make Rift more important. It's already really important in Pro. Um, it could get people to back off a of bot lane and camp tops. So they get like more gold off of the plates. I'm not entirely sold on that, but it's possible. So I think they're doing that deliberately to try to make top lane matter a little bit more in terms of Rift and in terms of being able to take more plates off of ganks. Which is fair, because you're only able to kill one person top if you get a successful gank. So the fact that you might be able to get an additional plate would add an extra 40 gold to the pot there. So maybe that makes it a little bit more valuable. Um, and if you're getting those three plates, once again, that's 120 extra gold. Is that going to make up for a dragon buff? I don't know. It depends if they counter dragon on the bot side. But I guess it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. So it's going to nerf like the hard siege comps bottom that are really trying to push fast. So like Caitlyn is going to be like turbo nerfed off of this. Um, who else is like a tempo champ that really has to get ahead? Caitlyn's the biggest one. Um, maybe something like Draven might be a little weaker off of this. Uh, ranged bully champions aren't going to do as well. So like your Zerath or your Caitlyn Senna lane, your... Um, Caitlyn Zerath lane. Senna is going to be a, a lot weak, well, somewhat weaker to an extent. Now, she does scale a lot better than Caitlyn does, but she also sieges really well. Um, but your Zeraths, your Vel'Kazes, all those types of champs that really want to push and get ahead early and exploit um, exploit their, uh, their immense harass, like Zyra, Brand, stuff like that. They're not going to be able to get the plates. They're not going to be able to get a, as much of an advantage in the laning phase. And so, ultimately, um, that could be a nerf to them. And the game's going to slow down a little bit, too. Like, those types of champs really want to get ahead and start closing out fast um, because typically they get outscaled by enchanters. So the kind of slower champs that are going to scale a little bit more are probably going to benefit. Now, this does mean that if the plates fall a lot slower, then you're going to get abused in lane a lot more. They can already do that to you, though, if they just zone you off of the wave instead of pushing. So this could change the whole, like, priority where you might want to zone in certain circumstances more often than you would want to push because it's less likely you're going to get advantages off of those pushing or off of those pushes. So I don't know. It might shake up the meta a little bit. And that can be really deceptive because, you know, that's something that I overlooked a little bit at the start of the season because the game was so fast. And that's one of the huge things they changed to slow it down was they added the extra armor on the bulwark so it's harder to take the plates and then they made the plates worth a lot less um so that that actually did slow down the meta by like five minutes or so and changed a lot of stuff around sorry about that got a little might be getting old cold here hopefully not coronavirus um but anyway, so that, that'll be an interesting one. We'll see what the final verdict is on that, and that's how that shakes out. But that, that could be pretty interesting for the meta overall. Okay, Spell Thieves and Sickle Nerf. So now it only triggers if you're near an ally. Good. They never should have changed this. So this is going to stop the abuse of using this item in um, mid lane and top lane. Now, I did see Cloud9 this week used a Sickle with Senna as sort of a support, and then they let... The actual support the Tom Kench get the farm. And then Senna just farmed champions pretty much. Like farmed stacks of her passive off of champions and just exploited the sickle gold. So I don't know how they're going to fix that if they choose to fix that. That would be a Senna only thing where they'll probably have to end up nerfing support Senna and how many souls she gets because of that. I'm not really sure. I wish people would stop finding ways to exploit and abuse these things like Soraka top, Sona top, Senna doing this stuff. I mean, it's cool, like, it's innovative, it's interesting, but as a support player, like, that's just going to get the supports and their items nerfed, like, pretty quickly, because Riot does not like to see that type of stuff, because it, it's, like, cheating the curve, right? Because, like, a big expression of skill for most roles in League of Legends is your CS, right? Like, the higher your CS is, you know, you fought for that in lane, you position, you traded well, and you have a CS advantage, and that's more gold. But if you just can get things like... 
um, spell thieves or sickle or all these other things and get like free gold like supports are supposed to get supports get that because they're not they don't get minions and they're not supposed to have the option of getting minions most of the time and so like their entire ecosystem is balanced around that but when you start seeing some of these like solo laners or people who are supposed to be farming minions just using support items instead um then that's very confusing to watch and to understand because you can see someone like oh you know uh zven was down 100 cs it looks really bad but then you look at his gold and he was actually up quite a lot because of all of his when you added up all the stacks that he got he got a ton of the stacks off of the senna and then all the gold that he got off the gold item um it added up to a ton so i, I don't know it's just like that riot really doesn't like that it, it's just feels like you're cheating a, an important mechanic in the game it's difficult for viewers to understand it's difficult to emulate in solo queue if you don't have a competitive environment with comms and a very specific strategy for it. So it's just something that's not healthy for the game that they'll probably get rid of. So I don't know if that Senna thing becomes more popular over the next couple of weeks. We'll see what they do to that. But this is definitely a step in the right direction so that solo laners don't take spell thieves. <coughs> okay. Uh, and this is a more interesting one. They're nerfing mobility boots and they're buffing boots of swiftness. So, sorry, you'll drink water there. Um, this might make people want to take boots of swiftness more. Like boots of swiftness are extremely rare right now. They're very cost inefficient compared to other items out there. Um, and they nerfed these a while ago because we were in a Boots of Swiftness meta. When, when was that? Like three years ago or so? Um, when did they last, last nerf these? Yeah, Season 6. Uh, yeah, they increased the cost on them on 6.3 by 100. <clears throat> and then they reduced the movement speed from 65 to 60. And then from 60 to 55. So basically they just took off 10 movement speed and added 100 gold to the cost. And that was enough to make them completely, like, unviable um, f for, like, three or four years. <laughs> They're just gone out of the meta, right? And, you know, on 520, they did buff it. They moved it from 1,000 gold to 800 gold and changed this around. Um, but, so it doesn't sound like much, but making Moby's cost 100 more gold and then increasing the gold value of Swiftness by 60... Five movement speed, 12 gold per movement. Um, could be really strong. And some people pointed out that like having that constant movement speed does scale with movement speed buff type of things. So, you know, if you have a Shirelia's, which is becoming increasingly popular, if you're getting buffed up by Lulu's movement speed, Nami's movement speed, um, you're running towards the Janna, you're getting that movement speed. You've got Trinity or Phage. I think that gives a flat amount rather than a percentage movement speed. But y'all see what I'm saying. There's a lot of stuff in the game right now that increases movement speed. And there are a lot of slows right now that decrease movement speed in certain ways. And it basically makes the slows a lot less impactful. And it gives some examples here of like what would happen, right? So exhaust, the slow effect is 30%. Your movement speed would be 280 if that happened, if someone exhausts you. But if you're um, <clears throat> going with Boots of Swiftness, then um, it would be two or 310 because the slow would only be 22.5%. So you're basically moving 30 faster while you're under the effects of exhaust. Um, if you get hit by a Jink Zap, you would normally be running at 170 movement speed if you, um, without the reduction, with the reduction you'd be running at 205, so that's a 35 increase. So a lot of times it looks like in most of these scenarios it's somewhere between 20 to 30 um, extra movement that you would have in combat from the reduction. So not only are you getting, um, you know, I think these normal boots have 45, 45 flat movement speeds. Not only would you be getting 60 flat movement speed, which would be 30% um, extra movement speed, but then you're gaining an extra 20 to 30 movement speed on top of that in fights where there could be um, lots of slows going around. And there are a lot of slows going around. Like So many champions and items and things like that um, are running slows. You think about just all of the abilities that have slows. There's a decent chunk of champions that are starting to run like Rylai's now. Um, 
that are having the slows on them. So there's just a lot of things out there that are applying slows. So I don't know. We I think that for some support, certainly um, this would become more of an option. I think on Recon, this could become a lot better because Recon really does like to um, move around in combat. Like a lot of times you run Mobies just because like movies are so good on supports because that allows you to rotate faster, obviously, but it also gives you better vision control so that you can, um, you know, go deep into the jungle ward. Uh, you can cover more surface area when you're sweeping um, to potentially get more um, uh, more ward kills and things like that. So, but you know, in combat, he wants to be moving around when he has his ult going. You know, he wants to be able to tag multiple people. And he gains even more movement speed because he has a huge movement speed buff when his R is active. And so he would like something like Boots of Swiftness. He's just kind of priced out of it right now because they're just so much less efficient than something like Mobility Boots. But if Mobies are costing 100 more gold and Boots of Swiftness are given 5 more movement speed, maybe that's worth considering. Uh, so on champions like Blitzcrank and um, Thresh... And champs that don't really care about moving around in combat itself, you know, maybe you don't take Boots of Swiftness as much, but <clears throat> there might be um, there might be some supports that would want Boots of Swiftness a little bit more. I'm trying to think of other champs that would get Mobies that would want Boots of Swiftness, because I think that'll be the main conversion. I think champions that usually get Berserker Greaves or a defensive boot like Ninja Tabby or Merc Treads or Sorcerer Shoes or whatever, I don't think they're going to switch over to Swiftness. I think it's just going to be some champs maybe you might want to consider swiftness instead of mobility boots in certain spots. So, um, we'll see. Janna might be another one um, who could benefit from something like that, but we'll see. So that's an interesting potential shakeup there. Okay, and then Orn is getting nerfed, so his brittle damage is getting scaled back um, by 2% early on. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, but that is a pretty significant nerf. I mean, that's one-sixth early on of the damage. That's a 17% reduction early on. And then later on, it goes down to 10. So it's like a 17 to 10% reduction in damage um, on his Brittle procs. And he usually gets multiple of those in a fight. And then his Masterwork items are all delayed by a level. So um, that will slow down, you know, um, how fast he's handing out those bonuses. So I still think he's probably going to be pretty strong off of that but it does slow him down by quite a bit it's going to take him a you know a couple of extra minutes before he hits that big power spike where he gets the two upgrades on his own items so we'll see it, it's it's tough to quantify how much that's going to mean but i think he is over the top right now especially in pro so that's an interesting way to buff him or to nerf him rather okay and then set getting nerfed again 37 base armor down to 33 base reach in down to seven is good because his passive gives him a lot of regen anyways Regen per level is down a lot. Good. Um, R, I didn't even realize that R slowed, but it slows for one second instead of one point five. Okay, fine. These are all like relatively like small looking buffs, but it's gonna it adds up, right? He's already been nerfed. Like this would probably be ten total nerfs, maybe more than he's had. So I think that'll be good. And then, so that that's a good nerf. And then Ramus and Amumu are getting nerfed again. They're reverting those changes? What? Really? Hold on. How much has Ramus changed? Win rate wise. Okay, so two weeks. Can I can't get a closer look at that when was that like oh it's only been one week so far it's so like the 18th or so like here um show me the yeah what's the silver here oh you take those out okay gold and silver Okay, here we go. Um, well, okay. I mean, that that's a pretty stark change. <laughs> you know, it's hard to argue with that. Like, because the, the average players in silver and Ramus is going to be played the most, and you know, like silver and bronze and 
stuff like that. So, you know, I guess... Now, he kind of fell off a cliff right there, but I think that's just because today hasn't completed. The 25th hasn't completed. So, um, he's being played a ton more. So, it looks like he's getting played, like, in 50% more games, and his win rate is... Uh, up from like 51 to around 54 percent so i guess he did go up about this makes it look a lot crazier than it is because it's only like half a percentage per point but it's still it's up like three percent i guess immediately with 50 percent more people playing it so maybe that attack speed buff you know did help him a lot more than i thought um okay it just seems really weird it's like you can't just let that play out for a patch i mean his win rate is still significantly lower Oh, let me... I guess it's not that low. Okay, and then Amumu. Okay, I guess Amumu has a similar pattern where he, you know, has been bumping around 54, 55% after those changes. But I mean, these champs have been so irrelevant for so long. Can you not just let them have a couple of patches in silver or gold? I don't know. I think I think that feels bad. I mean, I guess it was the combination of the Cinderholt buffs plus their individual buffs moved them up quite a bit. I, I don't know. I just I just hate to see them get nerfed because those champs have been so irrelevant for so long, especially Ramus. But. I, I guess. I would like to see him not do that, but that's fine. Um, okay, Blitzcrank armor going from 40 to 37, so he's easier to kill. I think that's fair. I mean, he's not intended to be, like, a stay-in-combat champ. Like, he should be fairly dangerous. Like, he shouldn't get immediately evaporated if people, like, start hitting him. But he does have a lot of innate tankiness with his mana shield. And his base stats are pretty high. Even though he's not really a tank. Like, he's basically like a one-shot engage, you know, ranged assassin, pretty much. Like, he's, he's like a sniper, basically. So, um, I think ultimately that's, that's probably a good thing to take him down a little bit. Because he has had a high win rate, and he is very good It's uh, against a lot of the squishy champions out there. He has been sitting around 52 to 53% um, overall, so... And he has a high play rate and a high ban rate. And he's just a real terror also, especially like gold and lower. He's even seen like some pro play a little bit recently. Not a ton. But once you start seeing pl pro play over things like Thresh, you know, stuff's getting a bit extreme. Because um, he's just so one-dimensional. And usually that's a bad thing for pro. But anyways, okay, fine. If you get a hold of him, you can blow him up a little bit more. That's probably fair. And then Bard. I really hate to see Bard get nerfed too because I feel like... He's one of the most unique supports in the game. He's really interesting. He's fun to watch. He's pretty fun to play. I know I don't play him a lot. But he just he's one of those champs where it feels like when you get beat by a bard, you're like, man, I just got outplayed by him, right? He hit the good stuns on me. He hit the good ults. Like, it just feels like he earned it, you know? Like, he's one of the most fair supports out there, I feel like, a lot of times. But I guess his win rate's getting a little too high at 55%. But I feel like he's certainly, it feels a lot more fair to go against something like a Bard than a Leona or a Nautilus. You know, if you're going against Nautilus, you're like, well, he pressed R on me, I guess I'm dead. <laughs> you know, if you're a squishy enchanter, right, or like Leona, it's like, okay, she hit her E, I'm dead. Probably, right? Or I can't even walk up to the minion wave because we're behind and she can just kill me through the minions. So not to say that those champs are really OP. I'm just saying just how they feel sort of psychologically in the game and just like for the health of the game in that sense. It just feels like Bard earns it a lot more. Like you can outplay him, he can outplay you. It's kind of like Thresh. Like it's very rarely feels like Thresh is just really OP. At least in my games. It's like, okay, that Thresh was just really good. He was hitting all of his hooks. He flayed back all of my engages. I just got outplayed, you know? So I hate to see champions like that where the skill expression... And the interactions feel, like, good from both sides to an extent. It feels like, you know, you, you can definitely beat him. You can outplay him, but he can also outplay you. So, I hate to see it nerfed, but they're nerfing his passive by 3 damage per 5 chimes. I mean, that does add up. Sort of early early on, he can get to, like, 20 or 25 chimes. And so, that would be, you know, at 25, 
That would be an extra 15 damage off per hit. You gotta remember that's AoE too once he gets the upgrade on the chime, so. I guess that's okay. If they feel like they have to nerf him, that's probably a relatively fair way to do it, but. I don't think he needs to be nerfed. Okay, buffs. Kane, orb spawn rate. Okay, smooth growth gives you 3% more orbs. Okay, I don't. I don't think that's going to matter. Maybe it does. I'm not sure. I assume that means you'd get to transform 3% faster. I don't know the current timings on the transforms. It probably depends on um, which tran transformation you want and the enemy composition. And there's probably a lot of stuff that goes into it. But it feels like he gets transformed around like 10 minutes or so. So being able to do that 3% faster, is that really going to matter? I, I don't know. I don't play Kane enough to know. But I, I get the sense that it probably won't matter that much. And the W slow is 60 to 70%. Now, that's only going to matter for blue cane because the W is a knockup, I believe, for red cane. So that's that's not going to matter. Um, so it's a buff to blue cane. I think that blue cane's just really bad a lot of times because he does do a ton of damage, but he just does not... He's just super risky. And I feel like the red cane is a lot more serviceable. He just has more CC, more healing... Um, so I, I don't think that's going to matter too much. Uh, I don't really honestly know what Kane's problem is, why he's not in the meta so much. I guess his numbers are just a little low. There is a lot of counterplay to him as well. You know, you can dodge his knockup. Um, you have plenty of time to do stuff while he infests you or whatever with his ult. Like, people can shield you. You can use Zanya's Hourglass. You can use Heal. Um, I don't know. So maybe, I mean, maybe this will allow Blue Cane to assassinate more squishy champs more often, but I think we're moving away from that. Like, there are lots of tanks out there. There are enchanters right now. Um, it's just a lot of counterplay to him. I just feel like there are probably better options out there if you want, like, a bruiser type of jungle. Um, so we'll see, but I, I don't think it's going to matter that much. Okay, Graves. Getting a little bit of extra magic resist per level. So he starts with two flat, and then by level 10, he's going to get another two and a half. Um, you know, it's given him 75 gold worth of, uh, magic resist at level 10. I don't, I don't think that's going to matter that much. Maybe, but I'm skeptical. The mana cost going to Q at all ranks is probably really nice. I'm not sure how low on mana he starts running with his clear, but I know that he doesn't like to get mana items. So that's probably pretty good if you want to, you know, have more mana for a full clear, and then a team fight, or if you want to stay out for an extended period of time to try to counter jungle to get a more preferable back timing. Um, maybe that comes into play. So that's probably really good. I mean, usually mana cost lowering <clears throat> is pretty nice. And then uh, the cooldown getting lowered by one second in all ranks is pretty good as well. So once again, that's going to help his clear out, <laughs> I think, by a pretty good chunk. So good buffs on Graze overall. Um, uh, he's just... I don't know. He's kind of like Kane. I'm not entirely sure why he's out of the meta. I feel like his numbers are just kind of low, and maybe he's not as good in a tank meta. He just doesn't do a lot. You know, he doesn't have utility or CC. His burst can be high against squishies if you get scaled up. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see. I don't think we're going to see Graves back in the meta, but... It's possible. Okay, Lissandra, the QAP ratio is going up by 0.1. That's a pretty big deal because that's what she spams, and that's her wave clear in the laning phase. That doesn't seem like a huge deal, but it's actually pretty important. I think her numbers are still, like, pretty bad. Um, her, like, her mana cost on her Q is really high. So I don't remember exactly what brought her out of the meta. I know they nerfed the interaction between Aftershock with her. Um, I don't remember what else because she was seeing a lot of play and pro but i think they just chipped away at her wave clear probably her q uh let me see i think this was the beginning of last year or so was that the cent or the um the meta where she was really around everywhere <laughs> okay so they increased her ratio on 920 near the end of last season so her uh w went up uh, her passive went up a good chunk. Let 
Okay, base damage increased on 9 9 by 20. AP ratio increased. Oh, okay, that was the massive nerf. Okay. So, yeah, it was like early last season. Um, they increased her cooldown on her Q, so she couldn't clear waves as fast by four seconds at level one. Now, you do level this up first, so really at level five, which you get pretty early in the game, um, it went, it's two and a half seconds longer, so that does hurt your wave clear. So the fact they're giving it a higher AP ratio is nice, but you're still not going to have a ton of AP early, so um, it is a pretty significant nerf, and that's going to impact your ability to uh, rotate or contest scuttles and things like that. Um, mana cost was increased as well um, by 8, which I think Jat made this nerf when he was on the balance team, and he was trying to talk about how this seemed like it was a really good, like that was a significant nerf. I'm like, dude, eight mana cost is not that much of a nerf <laughs> on that ability like it's okay but um base damage cut by 40 on the e is pretty significant now a lot of times you're not actually going to hit them with the e that's just a nerf to the wave clear and it does show through fog of war which is interesting so okay so they've given her a lot of AP ratios since then. They gave her an AP ratio here to 0.75. Ring of Frost is 0.7. Iceborne, like her passive, is 0.5. And now her Q is going to be, what, 0.7 off of 0.6. That's a, that's a lot of AP going up there. Um, I'm not sure exactly where you would play her. She's at 49%. I feel like there could be some comps where you play her, but I'm not 100% where that would be. Um, i trying to remember the different combos with her. I mean, like, she basically can serve as engage. Um, now, they did just nerf some hourglass stuff, so that could be kind of rough on her. And I don't... I, off the top of my head, I don't think it's going to be a huge deal for her. Now, she could be pretty good against things like LeBlanc. I mean, she's very similar to, like, a um, like a Malzahar. But I think that she maybe has a little bit more CC, but not as much sustained damage as him. I'm not really sure. Um, they did nerf uh, Conquer, which, on um, on range champions, that was a hit to her, too. So, we'll, we'll see. I don't think that's going to bring her back in. That's a nice gesture. Attack speed on Nico uh, per level is three, goes to three and a half. Okay, so she's going to have an extra at level 10. Uh, she'll have a five extra percent attack speed. I don't think it's going to matter. The ratio going from 0.64 to 0.68, that's actually a pretty big deal. Um, she's going to get a lot more. So that's like 4% uh, more um, on all of her items. So, yeah, she's getting, like, what, half, we just said 5% there, base attack speed, and then every item is going to gain 4% there, okay. The magic damage off of her on hit, which is or her W, I think, they're moving up to 150. And the AP ratio, they're doing 0.6. That's a lot of buffs to attack speed Nico. That's, like, four buffs to attack speed Nico. Um, and then the R shield. Uh, higher base and higher AP ratio. Now, let me see. It. They're, like, resurrecting all these champs that have been, like, dead and out of the meta for, like, a year. They're trying to bring them back. When was, like, Attack Speed Nico? I think that was when she first came out or so. So that was, like, Season 8. Like, in the fall, maybe. And I can't remember exactly what they nerfed about her. What is it, Rory? Okay, so that was 914. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm okay. Is she trying to hold it in, dear? Yeah. 
Okay, so attack speed growth. Okay, so they increase our attack speed growth there also. So they bumped it up twice. Um, and they bumped up the ratio from 0.62 to 0.64. Now they're making it like 0.68. Um, okay, less bonus movement speed. Clone, blah, blah, blah. Triggers, attack speed growth reduced. Okay, so it used to be 3.5. They reduced it to 1.5. So they're taking it right back to 3.5. Um, okay, so base pat That's her W, shape splitter, I believe, the passive. Base damage is reduced to 130 from 170. So that's knocking 40 off. Um, and they're taking it up to 150 with a higher ratio of 0.6. So if you have 100 ability power, um, then it would be about the same. So if you go for Nashers, basically, which is one of the core items you would get with that build, then it's pretty much back to where it used to be. It's very close. It's like between 165 and 170, depending on your runes and a couple other ways to tinker in there so she's going up so she's got a faster she has her old attack speed ratio she effectively has the same w damage that she had back then again and it scales even higher if you get more ap which with that build with on hit nico i don't think you get that i think you get like nashers gensus um maybe blade and king <laughs> but you have a fast ratio your w does more damage um I mean, what else? <laughs> oh, she's singing. 1.5 at all ranks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think she's back. Right? I mean, what am I missing? That, that's exactly why they nerfed her out with that on-hit build because it was really toxic in the top lane. It was even being played in the bot lane all the time. So that was season nine, kind of early on. They had to, they nerfed it out several times. They are literally giving her everything back. Even better. I don't think her attack speed was ever uh, 0.68 before. Uh, it's not going to tell me base numbers. Yeah, it was a 0.6 AP ratio. Um... Granted her bonus movement speed for one second. That is still not intact. I think that that has been... So that's not what it used to be. But you're basically getting 0.6. What are they putting it back to? Point, um, back to 0.6. Okay. So she still is losing 20. Okay. So based on where it used to be, she still is losing 20 from her initial release. But it is back to 0.6. And I believe the attack speed scaling is the same. And I think her ratio... I don't know if it was ever that high to begin with. Um, either way, it seems like it's pretty close to where she used to be. Um, now, the question then is, well, how much have the runes changed and the items changed that she used to get? Gensu has been nerfed since then. I think it used to be every second hit she would get um, the on hit, so she would get the extra um, damage twice, and she would get the movement speed more often. Um, Nashers is the same, so she'll be a little bit weaker. What's her range? Uh, what's it like? Her movement speed's three forty still, which is strong. Is it like five fifty? Okay, I thought she's like five twenty five. Okay, so she could actually operate as a marksman again. I know she was doing that for a little bit. Um, I mean, Lulu's been buffed a lot. Lulu would be great with her. Um, any sort of attack speed user. She gets cheap items. She's got the Nashers. She's got the... Um, she get na I'm not sure what she'd get first. It might be Nashers. It might be Blather and King. But she'll probably get one of those and then Gensu's and then um, the other one, whichever one she didn't get first. And then it's just kind of off to the races. I don't remember if she abused Wit's End before that got changed or not, but she could, in theory, do Wit's End again as well with it if you're against a heavy AP comp. Um, or you could just get some kind of AP item 
uh, to go with it. Like a, I don't know, a death cap or um, a Rylize. Would Rylize work? I mean, I wonder if that bonus damage would trigger a slow. So it is magic damage, but it's on your hit. I'd have to look that up and see. But if Rylize triggers off of that, um, that might be worth considering as a later item. But then she's got that utility of the Pot Blossom. She has her Tangle Barb. It's really easy for her to get away from ganks. Okay, so the passive movement speed is lower um, than it used to be. It used to be 20%. So it is going to be nerfed a little bit from how it was, but I think it's going to be a bit more viable. And then top lane, um, she could be a top lane terror again, potentially as a, a split pusher. So we'll see. It's definitely interesting. Um, I, I think that really could make her a lot more valuable. I mean, the, the 25 base shield with the much higher AP ratio is a very big deal also. So we'll see. Good buffs, good buffs. Okay, Twisted Fate... Um, Blue card is 0.9 AP ratio now. That is a massive buff. So they're trying to get you to do more blue card and red card to make it to where you don't always just want a gold card in a fight. Um, so now you might actually want a blue card instead of accidentally, you know, memeing that you pulled the blue card. Um, Reginald. I know he was kind of famous for that. <laughs> the other day, everyone gave him hell for it. Um, but I like the change, right? So they're not they're not doubling down on what he's currently like really strong at you know they're not um they're not lowering the cooldown on his ult they're not oh, increasing the damage on his gold card but they're making that blue card hit a lot harder for potential poke if you're not trying to all in of course if you hit the gold card for poke you know you can also hit him with a q so we'll see now one of the big um, kind of secret things here that a lot of people may not talk about is that AP ratio on a blue card actually gets um, translated into more damage on towers. So you would do a lot more damage on towers. Now towers are going to take less damage from ranged. So you got to, you know, calculate that in. But it's, it's interesting. I don't know if it's necessarily going to make him better than he already is. I mean, obviously it's a buff, so it will. But I just don't know if it's going to change his position in the meta. Um... But uh, that could be nice. And the red card ratio is actually really good, too, because that's going to increase your wave clear by quite a lot when you can red card and then use your um, your wild card. So that could give you even faster wave clear in the early to mid game. I don't know the exact break points on that, but um, that could help you clear that back line maybe a couple levels faster, depending on how much AP you have. Uh, but yeah, okay, good. I like it. Twisted Fate's a very interesting macro-oriented champion. You don't see him a lot in solo queue. So he's like the OG... Um, sort of uh, control mage, I guess. Macro mage. <clears throat> so good. I like to see it. Okay, Sivir. Q damage per pass is going to 35 to 95 with 130% total attack damage. So they're taking 20 off of the base, but they're giving it 20% of your total attack damage. Now that's 20 off of the base at later levels. But your total attack damage early on could be better. Um, i trying to think, how much per level is that? So like every level you're probably, it's like 5 off, something like that. 5 or 10 off. I think it's 5 per level. Um, I, I, so I'm wondering if you wouldn't then just max W first. Because you're keeping the total attack damage ratio the same, but then your W uh, is going to give you potentially more cost-efficient wave clear. Because I think your W is a flat amount. Like, it's very expensive with only one point in it, but it starts to become more cost-efficient as you get more points into it. But pretty much everybody maxes Q on Sivir, because that's your wave clear and that's your poke. But now, if a lot of the power is in the baseline total attack damage and not so much and putting points into it, um, if you're penalized for that more, then maybe you just put more points in W. So this would be a, a buff to um, W max Sivir, but a nerf to Boomerang Blade Sivir. That would lower the, like, that would save you a lot of mana if you do that. Um, oh, it, this goes up per level. Uh, 
Okay, seven. Oh, okay, okay. So you no, you can't do that as well. Because it starts at seventy no matter what. <laughs> then it scales to twenty percent. Okay, so that never mind. That's not gonna work as well as I thought. You gain an extra, you know, at level eleven and um, sixteen, you get a bit more movement speed. I think this is actually potentially a nerf. I mean, if you get a lot of AD, I guess it's good. It's uh, 20% total attack damage. So if you have 200 AD, you'd get 40. So I guess once you get more than like 125 AD or something like that, it's probably a buff. It's because you'd be 20 down. Um, I guess anything over 100. Okay, so... Not early game, but a buff to her late game scaling. I guess you still would max Q then. Okay. Yeah, especially if you're going like Infinity Edge or like Essence Reaver Infinity Edge. That could be a pretty good build. I don't think that's enough to probably bring her back in. I think the mana... They, they need to lower the mana cost on her W or her Q something. It's her mana is just way, way too high, even with Essence Reaver early on. Um, so, anyways. <coughs> I don't think it'll bring her back, but that will make her a little better late game. Okay, Kaisa. Now, this is going to be a pretty big upgrade to Kaisa, I think. So, basically, what they're saying is the Q-Max is going to do less with AP. Like, no one's building AP on her anymore, hardly. Um, so, that's your AP ratio is going from 0.4 to 0.25. So, AP's bad for Q. But you're getting two more missiles, which is massive. I mean, that's something along the line. I mean, it's not exactly 20% more damage on your Q because your first missile does a lot more and then each subsequent missile does less. Um, so it would be if you have... No, it, it's still going to be a lot. I don't know exactly how much with the reduction, but it's probably going to be at least 10% more damage on the Q, if not more. Um, so that's, that's quite a lot of extra damage on the Q. And then... Um, the W damage is slightly higher with less total attack damage, but a higher AP ratio. So a 0.1 AP ratio, but it's going down 0.2 total attack damage, but the base is up 10. Um, so I think that's a nerf to the W. But if you upgrade the W, then your refund is 70% rather than 50%. So you can really spam it. So I guess if you're going AP Kaisa, which once again, very, very few people are doing that then, um, you know, it's going to make your W more potent. But overall, I think it's a buff. Because um, I think a lot of people are upgrading your Q and then your E and then W last. But, yeah, so good. I think that's good. She's kind of in the gutter right now. She's an interesting champion, so bring her back up a little bit. Okay, Alistar, base health. Go into 600, okay. Passive can collect charges while it's on cooldown. So your roar goes on cooldown for three seconds um, whenever you heal people and you're getting more health. I, I just don't think that's enough to bring him back. Um, I just don't know why you would play him over Rakan most of the time. I mean, he is tankier. He can stick in team fights a little bit more. Um, you know, he can tower dive a little bit better. Like, they just need to sort of clarify what what his purpose is a little bit more. If he's supposed to be all in, like, tons of damage, they need to give him damage back on his E. That's what they took away, I think, one or two years ago. At least a year ago, at this point. Like, they lowered the damage on his E by, like, 50. And that was pretty much what pushed him out of the meta. Because he had been a pretty good hard engage, like, lots of damage tank. Um... Okay, so I forgot on 924B, they gave him a little bit of just random bonuses. Okay, uh, trample, total damage reduced to this. Okay, 20 less early. Okay, I think that was it on 824B. So yeah, you were losing... Because you didn't put points in that, so you were losing 20 off of that and then 20 off of um, the trample stack. So it was like 40 damage all in at level 3 that you were losing off of uh, an all-in trample. So that's a, obviously going to be a massive amount. 
So they could give him back that damage or um, make his heal more meaningful. Or I don't know if it heals minions anymore. I think it just heals champions. But it used to heal minions. I mean, I've said this before on the stream when people ask about Alistar. What made him so good in the past was he was so like resilient to poke and very good at pushing as a melee champion in the lane. Because whenever he roared, you could control the roar with your E, and then it just lowered the cooldown on your E. Um, and it gave you a lot more healing, and it healed all the minions, so that your minion wave would eventually like push into theirs a lot more, a lot more often. So that was what made him unique. And then Rakan also wasn't a champion, so Rakan was the de facto like hard engage, you know, WQ combo. That's how you start fights. If you want an engaged champion, he was the most reliable. Whereas Rakan now is a lot more versatile, has much better itemization, has a similar level of reliability to his engage, although with the nerf to Rakan's R, so that you can't R plus W instantly, he's slightly less reliable than he used to be. But either way, I just think he's really, really outdated compared to Rakan. So they need to give him like a different identity. Rakan's pretty bad with his damage in the early game, so giving Alistar more damage would be good. But then he's competing with Leona for that spot, so I'm not really sure what the um, what the change would be. They could give him more CC, which is what they used to have on him. His knockup used to be for 1.5 seconds, so they could just revert his E and make it castable again to heal people, and then you get 1.5 seconds automatically on your um, your combo. I don't know if they're gonna do that or not, but <coughs> I don't think we're gonna see him. Okay, Sona is getting all of her stuff back okay she still played in the top lane and still has a high win rate it's not like ultra high but it's not fixing the problem i guess they're assuming that doing the frost fang change is going to be enough to fix the problem um but they're worried that they hurt support sona too much so i guess that's fair enough sure and then we'll make sure we get out of here in under an hour Darius getting extra damage to monsters. Okay. I don't know if that's going to be enough. Maybe. I thought he might be a little bit better in the jungle, but apparently he's just hot garbage in the jungle right now. Mordekaiser also not great in the jungle, giving him an extra three damage on his passive. Probably not going to matter. Poppy Q damage to non minions, so jungle monsters. Um, I don't know what the 50 to 160, I guess that means how many points you have in it. I don't think that's going to be enough to bring her in, but maybe. And Poppy's in a weird place in the meta. I, I just, She just doesn't quite do enough, I don't think. Um, there are certain comps where maybe if they have a lot of mobility and you can stuff their mobility, maybe she comes in a little bit. But I feel like there are probably better options. She needs a couple of buffs. She, she's not like completely terrible, but... She needs a couple of buffs to come back. She there have been metas where she was very a very dominant tank top lane, but she's just been outshined in recent times by things like Orn, and then even um, you know Malakai and a couple other champs like that in the top lane have outshined her. Okay, but anyways, that's gonna be it. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. There are definitely some very interesting changes going on here. Um, I'm curious to see how the mobility swiftness uh, comparison is gonna shake out. The Nico changes are very interesting. Um, on hit Nico could be making a comeback. Um, I don't think of what else. The Orin and Set nerfs are probably pretty welcome. The turret plate changes will be very interesting to see how that shakes up. If it takes some heat off a of bot lane, and P, uh, the jungler should prioritize top a bit more. So Rift Herald gains more value. Um, we'll see. Then a couple of these Hydra things, we'll see how that shakes out. Obviously... You know, Kled, Fiora are going to like that a little bit. Maybe, like, Jax might like that a little bit. So, we'll see how that shakes out. But, anyways, that's going to be it. Thank you very much. Have a good day, and we'll see you next time.